Hello everyone, uh, it is Quentin again. I will today show you how to run a gluten container and connect another container to it. It will be relatively short, but it should give you a good insight on how to do it. So this is uh, the web page on GitHub. Uh, right now I'm on a Linux server uh, in the directory time gluten. Uh, okay, wait, let me remove that. All right, so now we have nothing. There's nothing in this directory. I'm gonna create a directory called data. Um, what I will do now is just run it interactively. So docker run, it for interactive and rm to remove the container once I'm done because I don't want to have it stay there. Um, what I need to add first is the cap add net admin so that the container can uh, administer its own firewall rules. Uh, that is useful to set up the custom firewall so that there's no leakage in your uh, networking and everything goes through the tunnel. Um, then we want to say what VPN service provider we want to use. That's going to be private internet access. That is the default. You don't need to set it actually, but like if you want to use another service provider, uh, you need to specify it here. Uh, you want to set a user. Uh, so you would need to specify it here, but instead I set it as a variable because I don't want to show the entire world what my username and password is for private internet access, I guess. Uh, so same thing with the password. All right, password, and is that it? I think that's it. All right, let's try it. So the, the image name is qmaker slash private internet access. That's the old name at the beginning. It was only meant to be working for private internet access. Now it works for a bunch of them, but I don't, it's really a trouble to change the Docker image name. So I just want to keep it the same name. Um, okay, so that should work. Let's try it. Press enter. Right, wait, let's unzoom a bit because this is really huge. Yeah, it is working. The green line means uh, it is connected. Um, so what is in the logs? Uh, you have a time here, so that can be useful. Um, okay, let's start at the beginning. The beginning is uh, a bunch of like uh, fancy emojis and all that with a bunch of links. There's an announcement here uh, that changes from time to time depending on the latest updates. This line is really useful if you want to create an issue, there's something wrong going on. Uh, because I can know when this Docker image was built, which commit it corresponds to on GitHub, and what is the version. The version, if you just pull the, the image without specifying a tag, is always going to be latest. Um, and at the beginning, it's going to show you the version of each sub processes, the OpenVPN, Unbound, IP Tables, Tiny Proxy, and it's going to give you a nice, uh, nicely fancy formatted uh, setting summary as shown below. So in this case, we have all this. It redacts all your user and password things. So that's why you don't need to worry about uh, copying and pasting it, uh, for example, in the GitHub issue or anything. Everything should be hidden nicely. Um, OK, so uh, there's a bunch of things. Uh, it does some routing. It detects some. It detects that the tune device is available. Uh, for example, in this case, I didn't uh, map the tune device, but the program is clever enough to create it by itself, so that's nice. Um, it enables the firewall and all that. It launches uh, OpenVPN. There's an HTTP control server listening on port 8000. Um, and it shows you what the gateway VPN IP address is. Most of the time, it's going to be the same as your actual public IP address, but in some corner cases, it's not going to be the same. Uh, so be aware about that. And uh, finally, once it, this is the point where it's connected to VPN, and it's going to also, uh, it's going to fetch some things from GitHub uh, to set up the DNS of a TLS with Unbound. So it's downloading like the root key, uh, it's downloading a bunch of block lists, and it's going to say that that they got blocked, like malicious IPs and all that. Of course, you can turn them off, but by default, it's enabled to protect you. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right, so now we have uh, something working on this side. Now let's open another terminal. Uh, ooh. All right, let, let me just, uh, just connecting to my the same server, one second. All right, let's go in the gluten directory and let me zoom. Okay, here we are. Um, so now I'm gonna run another container that can be anything like a torrent client or anything you want. Uh, in interactive mode as well, because uh, I want to quit it when I control C. Um, and I'm going to 
tell it to connect to the contain oopsie container. Uh, oopsie, I think I didn't name it. Wait, let me just see what the name is. Um, uh, private internet access. All right, so the name is this one. Bravo. Let me unzoom a bit so we can see better, I guess. Okay, we can. Okay, it's that's the name. All right, cool. Let me zoom back. So I'm gonna run interactive mode and remove it when it's I'm done. Uh, network and I'm gonna specify the name of the gluten container. You can specify it, of course, if you want to. In this case, it's Brave Lehman, whatever that random name is. And I'm gonna say I don't know, Alpine three point twelve because um, I like small images. All right, done. I mean, okay, I'm in the container now. So blah blah blah. That's the container. And it's running on Alpine. Great. Um, now I want to check, like, how do I check, right? Uh, you can use wget. Wget means uh, web get, and it's a small, tiny tool to get uh, web pages, like web stuff. So I'm going to run it in quiet mode and output to the console with these flags. And I'm going to get, uh, for example, ipinfo.io and see what the results are. Yay! All right, where? Who? What is this? Okay, I have no idea where I am, but I am. I'm not where I am physically. <laughs> so I'm in uh, Europe. GC now, right? Uh, I think the default. I didn't specify region. The default region is uh, Austria. So I believe this is, this must be in Austria, I guess. Uh, you can of course specify the region, but that's not the purpose. Uh, so. Here we go. So we have a container connected to that. Uh, you can of course run it instead of it dash dash rm. You can already do dash d, so it runs in the background. Uh, that is, if you want, for example, to have a, a torrent client or anything you want to run constantly, uh, you connect it with this flag to the gluten container, and that's pretty much it. That is very straightforward. All right. That will be it for today. Now, um, let me quit that. Okay, and when I stop, I press Control C, and it sh shows me that the shutdown is successful. Yay! Um, in the next video, I will show you how to um, connect to the gluten container um, using your computer device on your LAN. But before leaving, I just have one last thing to say: is that Quite often you want, for example, to access the web user interface of uh, the container connected to Gluten. To do that, there's, it, it is a bit convoluted, but there are ways and it's very well documented. So it is in this section, connect to it, and in this point, access ports of containers connected to Gluten. Okay, so it is a bit convoluted. So there are two things to do. Actually, I just realized there's something missing here, but uh, the first thing is you cannot publish any port on the second container that you use that is connected to Gluten. You need to publish the port on the Gluten container because they share the same network as Gluten. If you connect a container with the dash dash network uh, container, uh, whatever the name was, Gluten. Um, it will use the same network stack that Gluten has. So Gluten is the master in uh, network terminology. So you will have to publish the ports uh, the classic way with dash p 8000 uh, colon 8000 no 9000 whatever, and then you can access it. One more thing that is the, a limit of the Gluten container, but there's a, it's a bit of an annoying thing, but there's no way around it because it's a VPN application, is that you will need to specify uh, this variable, extra subnets. So uh, these extra subnets means these subnets are allowed to connect to the gluten container. So you need to specify, for example, if your line is uh, from 192.168.1.1 to uh, 192.168.1.255, for example, you need to specify this environment variable. Extra subnets uh, equal this thing. Okay, you can add multiple with a comma if you want to. Um, 
but this will allow, for example, your LAN devices to access that port. We thought that they won't be able to access it because the routing inside Gluten will just discard uh, the traffic. So that is an important point. But it is relatively easy to set up and uh, I hope you can manage it. Feel free to ask me any question if you have any question on that. And that's it for now. I will see you in the next video.